Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hey, skinny Malent, throw me the matches, would you? Where are they? I don't see them. On the mantel. Mama, now how do you like that for laziness? I am to walk halfway across the living room because Sir David Norton is too lazy to walk three steps. Typical male attitude. I am sitting down. So? So, for me to get the matches would mean that I'd have to rise to my feet. So? So I would expend more energy than you would spend walking from the window to the mantel, collecting a kiss for your trouble, and walking back to the window. Did you say that I would collect a kiss? Every person has his price. What makes you think a kiss is mine? The look in your eye at the suggestion. Listen to Mama. Mama's right. Mama's always right. I think I'm too easy to get. Mm. I think I ought to give you the matches. I agree with you there. It can serve your energy. Thank you. But ask no price. No price at all. Just as you like. But please, Claudia, before it's time for dinner, the matches. Hmm? Dinner isn't for another half hour. No remarks from you, Mrs. Brown. I shouldn't do it, I know. It's no way to hold a husband, I'm told. But here your matches, Catch. Who told you what? Thanks. Nobody. Nothing. Welcome. Have you been reading the Love Lorn column in the papers again? They're fascinating, aren't they? Oh, they're fascinating. The troubles people can have. My Mm. daughter is a ghoul. She's just plain nosy. There was a breathtaking one from a woman today, a wife. Mm, There usually is. She was worried. What about? I couldn't tell. (laughs) About her marriage, I guess. What makes wives more as you to worry about? Or... David, take the pipe out of your mouth. We can't understand you. Not that we're interested. I said that's what most wives are usually worried about. What? Their marriage. Oh, that. Mm-hmm. Say, how would we happen to be talking about that? You brought it up. I did not. If that's all there is to be to this conversation, I'm going back to my knitting. So long, Mama. I'm going back to my evening paper. So long, David. Oh, just when things were getting interesting. You mean you're both really not going to talk? Really? Really. Then I might as well go back to my window and stare out into the dusk. It's getting awfully darkish. Only in one part of the sky. I wonder what the world is like. Hey, are you talking to yourself? Well, it's better than nothing. Is it? David, what train will we take to New York tomorrow? Oh, that's true. You're coming in, aren't you? Time for me to see Dr. Rowland six weeks since I've had the baby. Can you believe it? I can believe it. Any complaints, David? Mm, No. I feel as if we'd always had him. He's almost getting to be a habit. You know, actually, it's almost as if we didn't have a baby in the house now with Bertha. It's a miracle the way that woman gets everything done. Nothing left for me. David, you haven't said what train we're taking tomorrow, you know. Well? Just think going to New York. To New York. A whole day with nothing to do. You sound like a hick. Don't I? Mm. David, listen, don't frown. I don't ever think of New York hardly at all. Believe me, I don't miss it at all. There's nothing wrong if you do. I know it, but life is pretty full up here. Baby, Mama, Fitz and Bertha. And remember, you you promised me a pig. Mm, In a moment of weakness. In a moment of vision and inspiration. I wish the baby could notice what a beautiful evening it's going to be. So quiet, so pale. Say, is that Fritz up there around the barn? Hmm? Yeah, I guess it is. Honestly, he just hates to come in the house and call it a day, doesn't he? I think I'll go up and have a word with him. What about? Now, aren't you Miss Nosy? About the pig? No. No, not about the pig. Then what about? Well, just about... Cleaning up the east field. Oh, is that all? Now, can I go talk to him? Go ahead, if you like. Well, thank you. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Call me if dinner gets ready, will you? Sure will. Yes, Claudia? Yes, Claudia, what, Mama? What was it you were going to say? When? Just now, after D- David left. Are you a mind reader? No, I didn't know what you were going to say. I just knew you were going to say something. What was it? I'm crazy. Am I supposed to agree or disagree? Agree. 
In that case, it's no news. I really think I am crazy. Specifically, why? Sometimes I think that... Well, it's just that I wish I... I wish I were Fritz. Mm, That's not so crazy. (laughs) I really think David prefers talking to Fritz than to me. Fritz is a very intelligent person. Very. And he's intelligent about all the things David's interested in. You're very lucky. Animals, crops, land, fertilizer. I can't talk about any of it intelligently. In spite of it, you managed to talk quite a lot. Mama, I'm serious. I know you are. And then there's architecture. David's love and profession. I don't know a joist from a... Well, a joist. You're not an architect. I'm not anything. Hmm, I wouldn't say that. So I'm a wife and a mother... Anybody can be that. Yes, anybody can be it, but not anybody can be it successfully. I wouldn't blame David if he thought I was a terrible bore. All I can talk about is our our son. Actually, I don't even know anything about him. The house and... You haven't had any complaints from David, have you? Of course not, Mama. I was just thinking, though, that... It really isn't all quite fair to David, is it? What isn't? I'm not the girl he married anymore. Aren't you? He expected one thing, and now he's got another. I'm even getting fat. Oh, enormous. Since the baby, a whole inch around my waist. I used to be 24 inches, and now I'm 20... Now it's 25. It's a tragedy. There is no doubt about it, Mama. No doubt at all. I am a wife. A mother. Even a matron. I don't think you're as much of a matron as you think you are. But is it fair to David? Is it what he what, what he bargained for? All these responsibilities. His work, his home, a son, a wife who's not only his wife anymore, but a mother as well. Yep, the baby has changed things. I wonder if it wasn't too big a price to pay to for what we had when it was only David and I. Just us. Change is good and healthy. I don't care about good and healthy. I just care if it's what David wants. It's his life to live the way he likes. How is it for you, Claudia? For me? Perfect. But only if it's perfect for David, too. Well, stop worrying. David will tell you when it's no longer right for him. He'd better. I... I love him, Mama. He's all I need. For a man, maybe it's... It's different. Don't you believe it. Not David's kind of a man. Still, I wish I were more exciting. Hey, isn't dinner ready yet? I'm a hungry man. Good! In five minutes, you'll be even hungrier. What's so good about that? Do you want me to go and nag Bertha? Why don't you? Be pleasant for me to... Have you nagged somebody else for a change? Ma, you're hilarious tonight. And where are those confounded matches? Right where you left them, on the table. Oh, oh yes. I'm, I'm getting to be an absent-minded professor. Only about your pipe, David. I hope. All right, Mrs. Brown. Confess. Confess what? What are the secrets about? David, try and talk sense. Don't let Claudia be contagious. Were you talking secrets? Well, we are mother and daughter, you know. We have to have a few private talks. You bet you have, as long as you tell me what they're about. Hang me by my thumbs, inflict the direst tortures on me. You shall never know. Well spoken, Grandma. Tell me, Mrs. Brown, is this right for Claudia? Oh, you too. Is what right? This life on a farm, it's pretty quiet. Quiet? Oh, my. David, is it right for you? Well, we were talking about Claudia. Isn't it the same thing? Of course not. She's an individual, the same as I am, but she's still very young. Maybe she's had to grow up too quickly. Living on a farm pretty much alone, do apologies to you, Mama. Now she has a baby. Maybe it's too much too soon. You really love to worry about each other, don't you? Well, I've got to worry about Claudia. She won't worry about herself. Mother, do you think I've made too many sudden demands on her? 
What do you think I think, David? Well, she looks well. She's even put on a little weight. It's becoming. I like it. Your daughter's growing up, Mrs. Brown. She'll be a beautiful woman. Then stop worrying. But maybe she should be going to parties, dressing up evenings, seeing people. This is all this is all perfect for me, but I wish I was sure it was all perfect for her. I don't have to tell you she's the center of it. No. You don't have to tell me. It's strange sometimes how often you have to tell the person you love that you love them. No. Claudia doesn't use words either. That child can be awfully dumb. She has an instinct about the important things. I'll trade that in for a Phi Beta Kappa key any day. Did I hear you say Phi Beta Kappa key? David, you never told me you had one. Yeah, I never told you lots of things. Well, you better start right now. What about dinner? Another ten minutes. Then I better not start my life story right now. It's too long. That's what you always say. I don't think you have a life story. Anyway, you, you, I've never heard it yet. Well, a man's got to have some secret. Not from his wife. Thank you, Mama. Say, darling, I think I've got a better idea for tomorrow. What? Why don't we drive into New York? Then we'll be free. We can come back whenever we choose. David, if you like, I'd love to. You know I love driving next to you all alone together with your pipe in your mouth. It's the pipe she likes best. Of course. Of course. Of course. Oh, something else, darling. Hmm. You better take your best hat if you're driving into town with your best bow. Oh, darling. In that case, I think I ought to take two hats. Mm Mm-hmm. Put on your two heads. Isn't he sweet, Mama? All I can say is one hat, two hats, when two people can worry so much about each other, there's nothing to worry about. Well, not, Mrs. Brown, if you have a mother, just like Claudius. Or a mother-in-law, just like David. Children, would you stop the blarney and run along and please leave me to my knitting? Whether you're shopping, driving, or en route to good times, you look for that familiar red cooler whenever you want to enjoy the pause that refreshes. But did it ever occur to you that you have a white cooler right in your own kitchen? There it is, the family refrigerator, just waiting for its supply of Coke to serve as your own private cooler. Keep the refrigerator well stocked with Coca-Cola, and you'll have delicious refreshment ready for yourself, for the family for hospitable service to guests at all times. Tell me, Mr. King, have you ever known two people to think so much about each other? It's very refreshing, Mrs. Brown, very refreshing. I'm surprised you didn't say it was as refreshing as a bottle of Coke. I should have. You're right. Seriously, every day that I live with Claudia and David, I'm more impressed with their attitude towards each other. And I'm even related to them. Perhaps that's why. Perhaps that's why what? Why they know so much of the art of living. Mr. King, you're a flatterer. Nope. I'm an honest man. The people who say marriage can't be romantic just don't know, do they? They certainly don't. And I wish all those people could be around tomorrow to learn from Claudia and David just how wrong they are. Well, so long, Mrs. B. So long, Mr. King. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.